Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos, and yesterday we had a Shadowlands development update come out, which I wanted to spend some time talking about. We'll mostly talk about the conduits, which are the, the second part of this post. The first part is a little bit of a discussion of the Maw. The Maw is something that, it's this zone where you can't mount, and so it's it's got this kind of hostile feel to it. Uh, and so far in beta, it has yet to really, I think, come together fully. Uh, and it makes sense here that that's something that they... It's good news that this is something that they're focusing on as, as something that still needs quite a bit of work to turn into something that's going to be fun uh, for people. So hopefully that ends up being realized. Hopefully we end up getting something in the mod that is pretty, I don't know, exciting. Somewhere, ideally, that you don't have like too strong of an incentive to grind in a huge amount of time. You know, you don't need to go there uh, for Stygia you know, eight hours a day or whatever for the first month if you want your guy to be full power. Uh, it's not really like that right now. Uh, but hopefully somewhere where, you you know, you can go there anytime you want to have some fun gameplay and, and get some cool rewards uh, that maybe aren't directly tied to your power after a certain point. Uh, that's something that they're working on still, and, and that seems reasonable. The bigger part of this post, or I guess, in my opinion, is the conduit discussion. So we've received a lot of feedback about the conduit system. Many of you have expressed concerns that the current system will unreasonably limit experimentation and multi-spec play early in the expansion. Uh, while the existing weekly cooldown may provide sufficient flexibility once players have all three soulbinds fully unlocked, we agree that it is initially too limiting. And this was this was really true. For instance, uh, you you could look at some. My friend Trell had this. He he like you know upgraded covenant conduits would drop for him. Uh, and he couldn't switch to them. He couldn't switch to the new upgrades that he got to because he already had used his Covenant swap or his Conduit swap for the week. Uh, so definitely a, a very big problem point for the old system would have been the first few weeks uh, of the expansion launch when everybody's getting these new upgrades and therefore would have been incurring that week-long cooldown uh, very often. So uh, in an upcoming build, we'll be replacing the weekly cooldown with a more flexible system. When first unlocked, the Forge of Bonds will be charged with 10 Conduit energy, uh, and placing a conduit into a socket will consume a single charge. So every time you slot a conduit in, even if it's an empty socket, right? Even if it's just, you know, what you got there, that costs you one of your conduit energy. And every day you get one conduit energy back. Adding a new conduit to your collection immediately restores one as well. So the goal is that... I. I guess I don't really see what the goal is here relative to just not having the system at all, relative to just fully free swapping. Let's talk about the places where this will prove to be a legitimate limitation for you. So this is Wowhead's Soulbind Calculator. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the kinds of ways you might want to use your Soulbinds that would cause you to run into this. So each Covenant has three different Soulbind trees available for that Covenant. Uh, and they will each have these slots in them, depending on where you go down the tree, that you will slot your conduits into. So say you were on the, you wanted to use Pelagos for, uh, for the Kyrian, right? And you wanted to get this thing, Road of Trials, that gives you this powerful movement speed effect uh, when you kill stuff, maybe Mythic Plus or whatever. Uh, so you go down there, and then you go here, and maybe you want this, uh, you know, this chance to uh, get some extra cloth when you kill, uh, kill stuff. You know, cool. That's going to make you some stuff of some kind. So you go down here and you've unlocked these empty slots here. Now there's three different types of empty slot. There's these endurance slots, uh, the finesse slots, and the potency slots. Uh, and some of them are in different spots. They all have this different icon, right? So this, this shield is an endurance slot. Within that you can put a conduit. And conduits are basically Azerite traits, uh, except the endurance ones are themed around defensiveness. So here's some of the Death Knight runs, right? Uh, something that powers up your Lichborn, something that powers up your Death Strike, something that powers up your Anti-Magic Zone. So the good news about these ones is you probably don't need to swap these, right? You can probably put ones in here where you wouldn't really need to swap, right? Uh, between, you know, if you wanted to play Blood and Frost off of Pelagos, you probably don't need to swap your, you know, this Soulbind out uh, very much at all, right? This conduit, this conduit can go in there uh, and be just fine. Maybe the second one, it's harder to find something that uh, that you'd really want to use for both blood and a DPS spec. You know, maybe, maybe you can't really find something there. Maybe maybe hardened bones works, but uh, you know, there's a good there's there's a chance you'd want to alternate between uh, different options in this slot for different specs. But let's say you can do that, right? Uh, that's the kind of thing where where you might you might be happy enough doing that. And then you get to these spots here. Uh, so this is a potency conduit, and these ones are basically spec specific. Uh, there's not really a way that you would have something in this spot that you wouldn't need to swap. 
uh, unless you, there are a couple of, like this one here, this proliferation effect, right? This just affects Shackle the Unworthy, which is your Covenant ability. So this one, if you used it in this spot, you wouldn't need to swap, right? So all this, uh, already we can see like, the, you know, this tree here, we've made potentially some sacrifices over best options in these slots in order to have ones we wouldn't need to swap, right? Whereas if you wanted to use something that was specific to a certain spec uh, or very, you know, a, a more niche use, you're much more likely to then need to swap uh, if you did want to use Pelagos on a different spec, right? Uh, and then this here is the Finesse Conduits. The Finesse Conduits, again, there's a good chance that you could use this for multiple specs. This one is more one where, like, between PvP and Mythic Plus, you'd find something that has, you know, in, in Mythic Plus, you're probably looking at something like getting some resource when you use your Interrupt, right? Uh, or maybe a little bit of a bonus to your Sprint, that kind of stuff, and you wouldn't get much value out of a slow associated with your Death Grip. That's the kind of thing you'd want in PvP. So here we're looking at something that, again... You can probably find something that slots into this tree pretty nicely, uh, and you might not want to swap it very much, but you also might want to swap it, depending on what kind of thing we're talking about here. So here's an example of, the, of that kind of soulbind tree that you'd build for yourself, right? This, you're allowed to swap this, right? Every week you get seven charges, uh, and that is something that, it means that you can do, you know, if you if you have a one conduit swap, right? If you if you if this is your set that you want to use for one situation, and then you just want to switch to PVP or to Mythic Plus and PVP, right? Uh, and you want to switch there, maybe these two conduits, and you're you're happy about that. You're happy about these other three. You don't feel like you need to change those between those settings. You can do that seven times a week, right? You can consistently over the course of the expansion plan to PVP and Mythic Plus every other day, right? Swap between the two of them and be fine. You can't do both of them every day, right? Because then well, actually, I guess you could if you alternated which one you did first each day, right? And then you'd only have to do one swap per day. But uh, you couldn't alternate between them frequently. But if you have something, if you have a conduit tree that you're happy with, you can just do that one swap per day and be fine. The other option is you could use a different soulbind tree, right? Maybe you really like the Pelagos tree and you want it for different sorts of gameplay, right? You want to play with Road of Trials for both your Blood and your Frost. That's going to be more expensive, right? That's going to be something that you're incurring this cost, right? You're going to run into this seven swap per week uh, rate limiting you, right? So that is uh, the problem with that strategy, right? So if you wanted something that doesn't cause you to run into the seven per week strategy, you either need to be swapping within the same Soulbind tree an average of one conduit per day or less. So that can mean a big swap, but you only do it once per week. Right, and you know we're talking about this, right? There's four, there's four conduits slotted in here. You can't actually change all four twice per week, right? That's eight per week. You don't make eight per week. You only get seven per week. So you couldn't do a full swap. You couldn't play like Tuesday with one set of things for your raid, and then the rest of the week with a different set for Mythic Plus. There'd have to be at least one overlap conduit between the two uh, for you to be able to do that. So that would be a problem. You couldn't do that if you if you wanted to, do. Uh, or if you wanted to do a smaller swap, right? You wanted to swap two conduits between Blood and Frost. That's a change you can do three times per week, right? Three and a half times per week. Uh, and if you wanted to do that anymore, you run into this thing locking you out. So uh, the ways to play around that, again, your options are find some middle ground conduits that you're okay with in multiple different specs. Uh, use the other soulbind trees, even if the, you don't want to use them as much for different specs, right? You could, you, could you could just put all your blood conduits in this tree, and then you could go into this tree and put all your frost conduits in here. That would work. Again, you're you know you're sacrificing there to do that, but that is that's an option as well. Uh, the other option is to bank stuff up, you know, bank up your charges, and then uh, you know maybe you you play, for instance, for Mythic Plus players, right? Tyrannical weeks we don't really play so much if we're trying to push Mythic Plus, right? If you if you're somebody who's trying to push high Raider IO score, for instance, uh, you don't really need to play on Tyrannical weeks, right? You just play on the Fortified weeks, so you could swap between the good Mythic Plus, you know, two different specs you want to play in Mythic Plus. Say you want to play Subtlety and Outlaw, depending on the dungeon, right? And that costs you uh, a conduit swap every time you want to swap and you want to play a lot of Mythic Plus one week. You can come into that week with your 10 charges banked up plus the one charge you make per day and you can have your, you know, 17 swaps that week and then you can just build them back up before the next push week, right? Uh, again, this gets a little dicier depending on what kind of, what your restrictions are. The more switches you need to make, the harder this is going to be for you. But there is a uh, there is a cheeky way you can play around this. So uh, because you get a new charge of conduit energy every time you add a new conduit to your collection, what you should do if you're at all interested in having the option to mess around with your conduits to try out different things in different situations, you know, if you if you if you just want if you're somebody who just wants to try, you know, in, in some situations you want to try on ending grip, and in other situations you want to try the death's advance speed up thing, and you don't want to be running into the 
you know, if I make this swap more than once per day on average, I'm, I can't sustain that, right? Uh, you should just bank up some bank up some extra conduits in your inventory. If there's a conduit you don't want to use, you know, or if you don't want to use it right away, save it in your inventory, and then you can use it not to get the conduit or anything, just to get that one charge of conduit energy that I mean, your collection will bring. So that's my big tip for you in week one, week two with the system is to just is to bank up any conduits and don't add them to your inventory until you intend to use them because they come with that charge of conduit energy as well and that might allow you to actually do mythic plus and pvp in the same week or something when you otherwise wouldn't be able to uh, or you know you'd have to make those sacrifices i was talking about earlier now some people are going to say okay uh you know these the sacrifices aren't that big of a deal you know why are you why are you crying about a two percent damage gain or something um and that's fair you know you can play the game with a two percent damage loss in different settings but there are people who prefer not to do that, uh, who'd rather, you know, who'd rather be doing 2% less damage than their friend because they played worse and not because they, you know, <laughs> ran into this inability to change because they, you know, they, their friend uh, PVPs or they PVP and their friend doesn't. So they, they have a more restrictive set or they play an off spec and their friend doesn't. So they have a more restrictive amount of swaps they can make per week. Um, those are definitely, you know, things you're just going to have to grapple with, right? Uh, it's really going to be best for you in this expansion if you are somebody who wants to have, you know, min-max optimized options for things. Having an off-spec is a lot harder than having that on a different character, right? Uh, so rather than trying to play Blood Death Knight and Frost Death Knight, that is something that's going to be punished by the system. Playing Blood Death Knight and Subtlety Rogue is not, right? Having two different characters will be much better for this, right? Uh, because you don't have to keep doing these swaps on the character. Similarly, if you want to PvP and play Mythic Plus in Shadowlands, make two different characters if you want the ability to, you know, try out different conduits in there. Because if you're trying to do both on the same character, your conduit swaps are probably already spoken for. And heaven forbid you, you want to raid as well, right? Uh, you also are going to need to make these swaps potentially between your raid and PvP and Mythic Plus sets. Uh, or, you know, of course you can just be happy slotting in all your stuff into your different soulbind trees and not getting access to, say, Pelagos on the multiple specs that you'd potentially want to use them on, right? So those are the decisions you'd have to you have to make here. Uh, if you are interested in being that kind of high-end player, though, uh, or if you're at least interested in just having the option to experiment with things, it's going to be better to have different characters rather than trying to do multiple things on the same character. Now, uh, the philosophy here, it, it still doesn't make sense to me. It still feels like this is just needless. I struggle to think about what player benefits from the existence of conduit energy rather than it just not existing. It seems to me like the the only sort of answer here would be somebody who doesn't want to feel obligated to make swaps. So because there's a system that says, you know, swaps are annoying, right? You can just justify not, not swapping around your tree uh, by the fact that, you know, you have this conduit energy limiting you, right? Uh, or potentially if there's a group situation where groups will be interested in having you have a certain soul bind, you can point to this as as cover for why you, you're you not going to swap or whatever, right? I don't, I don't know. I mean, that, that's the only thing I could come up with as somebody that would benefit from conduit energy existing rather than not existing. Um, it's certainly better than the once per week hard lockout on swaps. It's certainly an improvement from that, but it is still... It still seems to me like it's defending a class of player that A, doesn't really exist as much as, as I think that they're worried about, right? Like what 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 person really needs the conduit energy system to prevent their friends from bullying them into swapping or something? Is that is that really a big problem? Or is this just people who want to feel like they're not making mistakes with their build, right? So, you know, they they want to feel like they're not obligated to swap between these different conduits in different situations. But they don't, so they, they don't actually want to do that work of swapping between the two, but they also, they don't want to be able to, right? They don't want to, they don't want to have been allowed to do that because if, you know, if they were allowed to, then they're making a mistake by not doing it. It's possible that that psychology is really strong for a lot of players. And, and that is what Blizzard's looking at here. I, I hope not though, because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that's pretty lame. And I feel like that's, uh, that's not like, a that's not the kind of play style that, that you know should be supported right uh, you know if you don't want to feel if you don't if you want to build a, a soulbind tree that you just never swap you should be you should do that right that you shouldn't need to not be allowed to swap to uh, you know as, as cover for you not swapping right you should just build a soulbind tree and not swap it right plenty of people do that with talents uh, and it's fine right that uh, you know but 
you don't need to they you don't need to create a system that takes away the option to swap for people who would want to swap uh, just so that people who don't want to swap feel better about themselves right uh, so i hope that that's not the reasoning behind doing it this way i hope that that's not what what's trying to be protected here i hope that instead uh, there's some kind of higher level reasoning from blizzard i you know i i, st I still don't understand it i still don't understand all these systems really that restrict your options and make it so that it's randomly better to play you know, an off class instead of an off spec. Um, but it, it, this is better than the previous system. So that's, it's good. We're moving in a good direction at least. Uh, and then finally here, class and covenant balance. Tuning has been underway over the past couple of weeks, but much work remains. Our initial tuning efforts have focused on covenant class abilities that were outliers on either end of the spectrum, including some substantial redesigns where necessary. Uh, the coming weeks, we'll see continued iteration on these abilities, as well as the soul binds that complement them. Balance in this area means pursuing a mix of offsetting strengths and weaknesses rather than identical capabilities. And our goal is that every class covenant combination should have something to commend it. Definitely a good goal. Um, again, I think so. I think that the main way that you can balance classes and covenants uh, is just to make the covenant abilities weak, right? And that's mostly what we've seen happening over the past couple of, well, the past beta patch in particular was that uh, it was a really big nerf to most of the abilities that were substantially worth using, right, the abilities that were dramatically better than not having access to them, have been nerfed to the point now where there's not really a huge gain to playing any given Covenant. And I think that is the right way to make it a balanced game. Uh, I don't think that it's the right way to make it you know, super fun, right? I think it would be better fun-wise if the Covenant abilities were powerful buttons that were much better than pressing just a rotational replacement level ability, right? But you can't really have the Covenant abilities be that powerful and not swappable without it creating a big balance problem, right? Because if you make a Covenant ability that much better than, you know, using a, a rotational ability and 25% of players have it, 75% of players don't have it, that creates big problems, right? Um, if they were swappable, then you could do that, right? You could have you could have the Covenant abilities that are, are powerful and impactful and not have it be warping to which players get to play the game and which players don't. Um, but given that they, given that's a hill that they're choosing to die on, this is the best way I think, go to, I think forward. So you're, you're going to see, you know, depending on what, what class you're playing, you're going to see the covenant abilities that you were excited about get nerfed, uh, and just know that it's happening to the other classes as well. And it is the right, it's the right way to make these things balance. It means that for the most part, covenants are not going to be super relevant, uh, in balancing and stuff. Right. But that is much better than them being super relevant, right? It's much better to have it not really matter which covenant you pick for damage because they all don't do any damage uh, rather than have one be the best answer for raid and one be the best answer for mythic plus and leave players who want to try and do both uh, forced to roll a different character if they, want to, if they want to realize that big damage difference. So I think that this is the best way forward for balance. And again, I, I still have core philosophy dis disagreements here with, uh, with what they're up to this expansion. Uh, but... Both both conduits and covenant balance and stuff, they are moving from a direction where Shadowlands will be a, an expansion that I would enjoy despite those systems to Shadowlands being an expansion I can enjoy while ignoring those systems, which is better. Obviously, the best situation we'd get to would be one where Shadowlands is an expansion I enjoy because of, partially because of those systems. Uh, but I think that I think that the core design choices are locking that out for me as it stands right now. Uh, again, movement in a good direction, though. So uh, I do have to commend that. still think the conduit energy thing in particular is, it, it, you know, th this sort of like, it feels like the kind of Band-Aid currency-based solution that gets implemented mid-patch cycle uh, because they, you know, they really need to fix the problem with a Band-Aid. But it's early enough still, right? The game hasn't actually been released yet. You can, you don't need a Band-Aid solution to this, right? You can still just, just fix the, the root of the problem. Uh, instead of needing to slap a band-aid on this thing because it's, it's not the middle of the patch yet anyways uh that's my thoughts on conduits and class and covenant balance uh, again remember the little tip about saving up your conduits and not learning them uh, in order to preserve that conduit energy refill that they give you because that might be uh, particularly useful if you want to do multiple things in a given week uh if you like the video remember to hit like and stuff thanks everybody for watching i'll see you in the next one bye